Are we rolling? I became homeless, I don't know the exact date, probably about 2012 to 2015, but I had kind of breaks in between. I was part of the hidden homeless in Edmonton, but I, I had an apartment building, which I didn't realize at the time was in a really bad area of Edmonton, and it was infested with bed bugs and everything I had, I kind of lost, had to throw it out. I kept on getting woken up in the middle of the night because I was on the basement floor and I didn't have drapes at the time and there was some not nice people running around kept on banging on my door and waking me up because I had to sleep in the living room. Yeah, I became homeless. I can't recollect as to what year it is. But uh, it was only a year and a half after coming to this country. So I was on the streets and I landed up at the, it's called the Salvation Army. And they were at a smaller facility than what is today that was not built. This was the anchorage. There's just not enough. We, our wait list is long and we need more places that provide this kind of care. I came to Peter Coel, oh yeah, after 10 years, after that, and this is where I am today. In the context of what is written there, which said more than housing, it's, it's a fact because the minute you get into, get past the door, it's not only housing that people here living get, they get much more than that. They get their meals, they get a chance to take part in games, in indoor games, outdoor games, in groups, and then the food is just out of this world. And you can even have dub seconds if you feel like. There are quite a number, one, two people that like seconds, and they get the seconds. We live here like a family, you know. Although there are certain people who don't want to mix around. They keep to themselves, but most of them mix around here. And it's a feeling of like, it doesn't feel like you're living in a group home. It feels like you're living at home. And that's a feeling that is great, you know. That's all I can say. I said it before, it's a, it's a safe space. It's something I know that I can come home to and nobody is going to tell me to leave. So to know I've got somewhere safe to come home to where I've got my coffee, I've got my tea, right? I've got food, I've got a dog that kisses me to death, right? I've got a safe family. That's what home means. And you know what the biggest word about home that I share with my friends is love. Whether that's love of friends, love of community, which is so important but love of 
your relationships inside the home. Although I don't have a room at the moment, I live in a dorm. But all the, you know, like, there's a lot of give and take when you live in a dorm. You'll get all kinds of sounds coming at night. Then somebody is coughing, somebody is farting, somebody is doing this, somebody is doing that. But, you know, like, on the whole, it's, it's not all that bad. Oh, this goes on. Shooting. This goes on 24 hours here. Yeah, yeah. When she's on the phone, it's, she's, it looks like she's broadcasting something. I just needed somebody to hold me while I was like, such a terrible pain. You know, sometimes you need somebody to When I open my eyes, I look up to the ceiling, and the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, Thank you, God. You've given me a day where I've opened my eyes to and I can see a roof over my head and I thank them and I start. Do my shave shampoo and all that, go have my breakfast, cereals, if there are eggs, eggs, if there are no eggs, don't make no difference. That is the time of the day where I like most, you know. At least I'm alive. At least I've got a roof over my head. At least there are people I can talk to. At least I won't go hungry. There's so many things. The second thing I do is call my mom. Call her in the morning, all the way in Pakistan. She prays for me over the telephone. And then she blesses me. And my day starts like that, with the prayers of my mother. And policies have got to change on misinformation of what homelessness is, right? And there's so many people doing this good work. So what that comes around to is a powerful word. It's called stigma. So that means education, conversations, and talking about it out there on a provincial and national level. See me where I'm at. If I'm in jeans and a ball cap backwards, or I'm spaced out on some stupid drug, see me where I'm at. Dignity and respect is not tied to a set of keys, it's tied to being a human being. Thank you. The people here, you know, like, they come at that stage in life where they've done it all. They've said it all. They've been it all. And now when they come to this point, in life, in this place, it gives them a better opportunity, you know, to voice their feelings or to, to tell the world that this is the way I am and this is the way I want to be. It gives me a heading to what will I be tomorrow. That's what you get here.